They have very individualized profiles on people that in part have been produced by, by AI and some of these big data mining firms that work for intelligence agencies like Palantir. And, and the goal of that is to basically, you know, uh, the military and all of these groups, uh, knowing that we, we know that they've invested millions of dollars in building essentially bot armies that are used to conduct influence operations. And we know they also do that uh, against the domestic populace. And that, uh, you know, this was legally legalized under the Obama era. They lifted the domestic propaganda ban and all of these other things with the NDAA or one of the NDAAs in the Obama era. And all of that can be pointed at the U.S. populace domestically uh, for the purpose of advancing, you know, what these guys say is in the U.S.'s national interest, but increasingly it's in, you know, either the deep state or the, the power elite's best interest. The past few years have given a whole different meaning to the phrase conspiracy theory. Now more than ever, it is clear that there are concerted efforts to continue to string us along while the so-called global elites achieve some very sinister plans so that they can stay in power. And whenever someone calls out their BS, they conveniently slap on the conspiracy theory label. But how many of the things we've been led to believe are so different from the actual reality? With the hundreds of millions of dollars that go into their grand propaganda efforts, it's becoming increasingly difficult to differentiate actual reality from blatant propaganda. Yet, experts believe it's about to become even more difficult with the increasing popularity of artificial intelligence. In her latest explosive interview with Peak Prosperity, renowned investigative journalist and author Whitney Webb warns about a huge looming threat that could very well take us back into the Middle Ages, not in terms of civilization or technological advancements, but in terms of a massive concentration of power in the hands of the few. According to Whitney, this has always been the plan, but the advent of the internet nearly devastated the plans. Though not without ills, the internet allows deep thinkers like Whitney to question the narrative and expose this grand plot. But that's the internet as we know it today. Starting from as early as 2025, Whitney warns that the internet will be completely different from what we use today. The change will be powerful yet so subtle that it will go unnoticed by many. We will now bring you clips from Whitney's interview as she explores a scary future of permanent AI censorship, drastic reduction in human cognitive abilities due to the dependence on AI, and deep widespread surveillance of every aspect of our lives, especially financial. Please watch, like, and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks and enjoy. What we're seeing is an effort to sort of herd the world towards what I would refer to as a neo-feudal model. So sort of going back to the same concentration of power uh, that existed in, in the feudal era or the dark ages of Europe, as it were, um, where you sort of have mm -hmm. kings and you have sort of their enforcer class and then you have a you know large serf underclass and that the goal is to have basically those... Um, those strata, the differences between them enforced by technology. Um, and um, I think a key component of that is the efforts to control the flow of information because in that era, right, the, the church uh, dominated the flow of, of information and knowledge. And a lot of this was later, you know, spread around and distributed to the surf class through the printing press and things like that. And now in modern iterations, the internet. And in order to bring things back to the neo-feudal era, the powers that be have to take complete control of the internet and the flow of information. And I think that's why we're seeing this increased push um, of censorization and also to have, um, you know, AI chat, uh, generative AI that they produce end up producing the lion's share of the content online. You know, those two things, I think, go together in order to sort of manufacture reality so that we're more easily controlled and herded into these various systems that they're setting up that will like maintain the vast majority of the populace in this surf underclass. And a lot of the um, big establishment thinkers on AI have pretty, pretty much talked openly about how that technology is being used to create sort of the, the upper class the kings of the the data barons, I guess, of, of the modern era, as opposed to the oil barons of, of previous eras, and how, you know, the people that control the data that AI trains on and the people that program and maintain AI will be sort of in this upper class and that AI will act upon uh, the lower class and the lower class over time will become uh, cognitively incapable of understanding what AI is doing to them and how it's molding their opinions and will become dependent on AI. Um, 
for everything and will not really be able to function without it or even make their own decisions and, and know their own preferences uh, without it. And you know, this was laid out in, by people like uh, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, Henry Kissinger, you know, figures of, mm -hmm. of that variety openly talking about how this is where uh, this technology is, is taking us. Yeah, so I think information is absolutely cr uh, crucial to developing this neo-feudal model uh, precisely because um, if they can manipulate human, uh, how humans perceive reality, they can fundamentally shape human behavior. And I think that's really the ultimate um, goal of this. And I think, you know, during the COVID era, for example, that was a big uh, boon for them in terms of like the lockdowns and all of that, because people weren't interacting so much um, with the real world. They were instead interacting with the online world chiefly, uh, which they can manipulate more effectively and essentially um, create realities that don't necessarily exist and convince people that that's what's happening uh, and manipulate uh, trust also. And um, as I'm sure you and your audience are aware, the big theme at like the World Economic Forum for the past several years, including this year, has been rebuilding trust and how to uh, claim trust uh, or reclaim trust uh, among the people who have sort of to varying extents gotten wise to this um, this essentially big power grab uh, that's happening on the part of the elite right now. So narrative management is a big part of it. And the internet has been an issue for them in that regard, um, in, in terms of allowing whoever, uh, you know, anyone to publish uh, information or read, you know, in, and for people to read that information, hence the increased efforts to not just censor, but also have them through AI produce the lion's share of, of content. And I think it's been said now that chat GPT and generative AI like it is going to be responsible for like 90% of content online by 2025, which is, you know, a year from now. In a 2023 report, the Europol Innovation Lab estimated that by 2025, about 90% of the content available on the internet will be produced with the help of artificial intelligence. This lab supports the European law enforcement community in the area of innovation, so it is safe to say it's a credible source of information. But as Whitney has warned, the aim is not just to have AI control the internet. It is currently being presented as an unbiased source of information that can make human lives easier. But what's an easier life when we are all basically zombies? We will be reading what they want us to read, seeing only what they want us to see and thinking about the things they feel are appropriate. In addition, with AI producing 90% or more of the content people digest online, censorship will become really easy. So, even if anyone has a dissenting opinion, they will be instantly censored, surveilled, and harassed. Yet, Whitney says this is only a small portion of what's coming. The aim is the complete subjugation of the human race and consolidation of all forms of power into a few grubby, greedy little hands. Let's get back to the interview. And then the other factor here in terms of the, the AI era in which we are stepping into is the potential for um, AI generated people to say things they didn't actually say or for events, you know, through this whole deep fake thing uh, to suggest that, you know, uh, certain realities uh, exist when in fact they do not, uh, which is, you know, a whole different layer uh, to all of this uh, for sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure is going to be very heavily heavily weaponized, which is again why I think it's important for people to engage uh, just as much in offline discourse as online discourse, just because if you are purely online and they are taking increased control of the virtual world, um, you're going to increasingly receive uh, data and information that they are manipulating for their purposes. And I think right now we're seeing more of that than we <laughs> we truly ever have. Uh, so, yeah. you know, being offline and engaging with people and seeing how things really are outside of the online world, I think is uh, more important than it's ever been. They have very individualized profiles on people that in part have been produced by, by AI and some of these big data mining firms that work for intelligence agencies like Palantir. And, and the goal of that is to basically you know, uh, the military and all of these groups, uh, knowing that we, we know that they've invested millions of dollars in building essentially bot armies that are used to conduct influence operations. And we know they also do that uh, against the domestic populace. And that, uh, you know, this was legally legalized under the Obama era. They lifted the domestic propaganda ban and all of these other things with the NDAA or one of the NDAAs in the Obama era. And all of that can be pointed at the U.S. populace domestically uh, for the purpose of advancing 
you know, what these guys say is in the U.S.'s national interest, but increasingly it's in, you know, either the deep state or the the power elite's best interest, which tends to be uh, from preventing any sort of real change uh, from happening that would lessen their power or prevent us from, you know, going even further down this this path that we are on. So, um, you know, I definitely think it's, um, you know, open season for psyops in a way it never has been. And, you know, what I worry too um, in, in this particular sphere is that there's an increased effort because of their efforts to regain trust. What they're seeking to do is sort of to co-opt um, or use uh, or or lend people that don't deserve it anti-establishment clout uh, so that they can essentially act like they're going to deliver the change that people want, uh, but they'll be delivering the same policies that their their bases, their political bases are against, whether that's digital ID or programmable surveillable money um, or or things of, of that nature while claiming that they're against those things. You know, uh, as an example, with like central bank digital currencies, um, there's also mm -hmm. a dual effort by commercial banks to issue commercial bank digital currencies, which are also CBDCs under the guy uh, under the names of deposit tokens or bank issued stable coins. And so, you know, maybe figures like Trump and Ron DeSantis and some of these other figures have, you know, said, oh, we, if we're elected or in power, uh, there will be no central bank digital currency. Uh, but are they against, um, you know, JP Morgan issuing, uh, you know, uh, deposit tokens or stable coins that are just as programmable and surveillable as what, you know, the central bank could issue? And is that really any better for prosperity and liberty of Americans? Uh, you know, is it better to be surveilled by Wall Street and have them program your money than it is to have the Fed? You know, uh, quite frankly, not, especially when you consider that people like Jamie Dimon, uh, for example, have come out on record saying they think private property should be seized in order to meet, you know, UN climate goals and things of that nature. It's really ultimately the same thing at the end of the day. And so I think we're going to see, you know, various efforts to try and herd people into the same system. But in order to have that happen, they have to, um, convince people that the initiatives they're supporting are actually against uh, this control grid to an extent so, by giving it different names and different um, appearances, but ultimately it, it'll, it's fundamentally the same. Central bank digital currencies, in whatever form they are presented, are centralized forms of money that can be used to control, manipulate, and subjugate the populace. Whoever controls the money controls the world. Nobody in the right frame of mind will be bold enough to question or criticize someone or a group of people that can permanently freeze their assets, leaving them impoverished forever. We can already see how power hungry and above criticism these people are. The last thing we need is to leave them in control of all the information we get and a centralized digital form of money that can be easily turned off. What are your thoughts on Whitney's simple insightful explanation? How are you preparing for what's coming? Please drop your comments and observations in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.